Sometimes when you're writing a shell script, you'll want to do something like say, wait until a file exists in a folder, or wait until something successfully runs before you proceed later into the script. Now one good example of this is say you have a media rendering server and you do it with, I don't know, FFmpeg. And what you want to do is wait until a file exists in a folder, and then when that file exists there, you want to render it with FFmpeg and just move it somewhere else. Now, you obviously could do this periodically with, say, a cron job, but what if there was a way directly within your shell script to just loop until something actually works, or until something actually exists? And there is a way to do that, and it is completely POSIX compliant. Now the first way I'm going to show you is the way that you'd probably approach it if you don't know about the second way, because the second way is, it's a little bit easier, it's basically the same thing, but it's just a bit of a neater way to do it. So let's just go over to my main screen and just have a look at how this would work. So we'll bring up a terminal, and you can probably work out what we're going to do if you've done a little bit of programming before. But what you can do is actually use a while loop. So normally a while loop would be something like while true, then we're going to do sleep one echo high, and then done. So what this is going to do is it's going to sleep for a second, and then echo high while true is true. So this is just going to run forever. But what if we want to make it so when something doesn't work, then it will actually run the loop. What we can do instead is let's say we want to do on, I don't know, not cat, and then cat a file that doesn't exist. So as you can see, what it's doing is it's actually running the loop while this doesn't actually work. So if we were to then actually make a file that is called t, so we'll just touch t, as you can see, as soon as we create that file, it actually ends. Now what this is basically doing is every single iteration of the loop, it will try to run cat t. Now cat t will fail as long as that file doesn't exist. But a while loop needs the condition to be true to continue running. So what we can do is we can say, while this thing here, isn't true. So what this is going to do is basically flip the result of whatever this returns. So let's say this returns a fail. If we say while not failing, that means that becomes true. And if it succeeds, then it becomes a fail. Now if it fails, the loop obviously stops and it continues later into the script. This same behavior will work with a script as well as trying to run a program. So if we want to do something like say, instead of doing cat t, let's try to run a script that doesn't exist. Like let's just call it test g or something. This will continue to run until this script actually exists. So if we just go and make this script, so make script test g. Now this is just something I cooked up myself and as you can see as soon as we made that script in here which puts it into the location of my scripts directory it then went and actually ended that loop. So that works the same way with trying to cut out a file and trying to run a script that doesn't exist. Generally, a script that doesn't exist isn't a really useful use case. Maybe you can come up with some sort of use case for that, but there's one use case that might actually be really useful. But before we get to that, let's just clean up these error messages because generally you don't want to see things like command not found or no such file or directory. If you want some sort of special error message, you can put it in this loop in place of the echo. Obviously, you don't need an echo here if you don't want it. The sleep is there for a very good reason, I'll talk about that in just a moment, but the echo here is completely optional. So let's just get rid of these error messages. So what we can do is basically just send standard error to our null device. Now this is a special location on your system which is basically just an empty place to send stuff to. So if we just run this with a file that doesn't exist, not with that T file that we made just before, let's say with TE. So as we can see, it's going to keep running that high message, but we don't see the error message anymore because that error message is now being sent to dev null. If you want the error message, you can keep it, but I find them to be a bit ugly most of the time and I don't really see much of a use in seeing them. Now, what about this sleep? Why is the sleep here? So let's just remove the sleep and see what happens. I wouldn't recommend ever running it like this. It's a very bad idea, but let's... As you can see, it's just going to run every single instant that it can possibly run. So there we go. I don't know if you heard me through that or... Okay, my CPU didn't seem to spike. Basically, that will run as much as it physically gets time to run on the CPU. So if you need it to run as much as physically possible, do that. I can't see a reason why you'd want to do that unless you're like writing a game or something. Because I don't know how many times that printed out. It's surely way more than I can be bothered to count. 
For any other use case, I would recommend giving it some sort of sleep, whether that be a second, 10 seconds, a minute, whatever it is. Say with our example of the rendering server, if you try to check every single possible instant if there's a file in there, basically you're not going to get any rendering done because all of your CPU resources will be spent just trying to check this folder if there's files. No point doing that. You might as well slow it down to something a bit more reasonable. Okay, now let's get back to the example I mentioned earlier. Now, we'll run this one right here. So, as you can see, this will actually continue forever. So, what's happening here? So, test script is a script that actually exists. And it has one line in it. The line in it is exit1. Now, when you run the exit command from a shell script, generally people just run it with exit and nothing after it. Now, that's actually a bit of a problem. And I've done this myself plenty of times. Exit with nothing after it means the script ended successfully, or you can also do exit zero. Those basically mean the same thing. But what you want to do if a script fails is run, say, exit one or any of the other errors that are available. So exit one is just for general errors that happen. Exit two is for a misuse of shell built-ins, and then anything up to 255. Anything past 255, and then exit fails. So if I switch this over from being exit 1 to exit 0, you're going to see the result of the loop actually change. So we'll run this again, and as you can see now, it ends instantly. Same if we do it with exit with nothing after it. So we'll run this again, and as you can see, it also ends instantly. We'll just pick a random number as well, like let's just say 4. And if we run this now, now the loop will actually continue forever again. So exit and exit 0 both mean the script ended successfully. Exit with anything else basically means that the script has failed. Now, if you're writing your own program in, say, something like C, that number that gets returned from the main loop, that's actually your exit code. So a lot of other programming languages, though, will obfuscate this. Java is one exception that doesn't. But if you're using something that entirely relies on exception handling, generally you don't actually get access to this error code. If you're using a programming language that does, though, then you actually can change which number does actually get returned by the program. Now, what has all of this actually been leading up to? So, in POSIX shell, I've never seen this loop anywhere else, there is a special loop construct, and this is called an UNTIL loop, which is basically the exact opposite of a WHILE loop. So this will run until this condition here is true. So, let's just run this now, and as you can see, it's going to keep running like that UNTIL NOT loop that we just had. So, if we change this over from being exit 4 to exit 0, and then save this, as you can see, it has now ended as soon as the loop was successful. I've never seen this loop construct anywhere else. I found out about this a couple of days ago. It is available in POSIX shell. It's not a bashism. It's just a really, really cool loop construct that I think is actually really cool. So let's go over one other potentially useful example. So let's say you want to do a curl. And let's say we want to curl, I don't know, www.a.website. Obviously assume that this is a real website. Now, this is going to keep running until we can actually curl that website. Now, an example of why you'd want to do something like this is, say you don't know if you have an internet connection, or say the service that you're trying to curl frequently goes down, like WTTR.IN does. If you don't know what that is, basically it is a curlable weather service. So you might want to keep trying to curl it until it actually works. Obviously, this is one example where you want to have a sleep in there, because if you try to curl it every single possible instance, that's basically like a ping bomb. Don't do that. That's sort of illegal. I guarantee I'm getting a comment from someone right now saying, how did you stretch out two loops to be a 10-minute video? And what I want to say to you is, thank you for watching to the end. You could have just skipped ahead to find out what you wanted to find out. But thank you, and I really appreciate it. So instead of taking up any more of your time, I think I'm just going to end the video there. But before I go, I just want to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andre, P.E. Road, Tony, Donald, Oculari, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, so be sure to go check that out. I've also got my Amazon affiliate links so we can buy the gear I use in this channel, or just anything else you want, and I've got a small kickback for it. I've also got my podcast, that is Tech Over Tea. It is available on Library and YouTube for the video version, and any way you listen to podcasts for the audio version. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>